Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Nilak Tanswai, welcoming you all to the second day of the virtual symposium, Big Butterfly Month India 2020, Biodiversity Commemoration Initiative Webinar, September 8th and 9th, 2020, organized by Department of Zoology, Ravenshaw University, in collaboration with Big Butterfly Monitoring Network, a consortium of conservation organizations in India. May I now request our Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Professor Ishan Patra, Devensha University, Qatar, to kindly share the session. Thank you, sir. May I now request Dr. Kailash Chandra, Director, Zoological Survey of India, Kolkata, to join the session as the speaker of today's talk. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, Namaskar, Patra. May I now request Dr. O.K. Nemadevi, Consultant, Environment Management and Policy Research Institute, Bengaluru, to join the session as the speaker of today's talk. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome. May I now request Professor Nuna Samatha, Head, Department of Zoology, to join the session as the convener. Namaste. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request Dr. Tipi Rao, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, to join the session as the coordinator. Welcome, ma'am. May I now request Dr. Manarupa Patri, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, to join the session. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request Dr. Dhananjay Soren, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, to join the session. Welcome, sir. May I now request Dr. Shikha Jena, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, to join the session. Welcome, sir. With a sincere gratitude, I extend a warm welcome to all of you, as well as to all the participants of today's webinar. Now, I request Professor Luna Samantha, convener of today's webinar, to Greetings and good afternoon. Welcome to the second day of the celebration of Big Butterfly Month. I am happy to welcome all of you once again to our admins to discuss about some important uh, topics about the butterflies and their contribution program. We are happy to, we are privileged to have none other than this is a of disturbance. Uh, both, both disturbances. This is, it is our privilege to uh, have both disturbances. My request all of you to kindly mute, kindly mute, kindly mute. It's our privilege to have amongst us none other than the Director of Geological Survey of India, Dr. Kailash Chandra, as our esteemed speaker, as well as, as, well as Dr. O.K. Ramadevi, who is also chair, uh, heading the Center for Climate Change in the Environmental Management and Policy Research Institute uh, amongst us to speak about climate change and the butterflies. Because climate change is now the buzzword all over the, uh, the world in all dialects. Climate change has set into the uh, habitat loss and also increase in temperature. The best examples are the monarch butterflies of Northern America, which usually travel almost like 4,800 kilometers to the Central America or Mexico for nesting and also pudding, uh, for their uh, breeding purpose. Now, because of the climate change, their habitat is now pushed much and much northern towards Northern America. And it has been recorded that since 1993 to 2000, there is a 50% loss in their uh, number, population. So it is really threatening for uh, the butterflies uh, uh, in terms of climate change and the global warming. However, we do not have any record regarding our Indian butterflies. So that uh, this butterfly month was envisaged to do the butterfly count to cite all these species that has been already uh, spoken about by Dr. Kailash Chandra yesterday, the 1650 species, which Dr. Sohel uh, Madan has said that we have only capable of identifying, citing 299 species. So where are others gone? 
is so this is an initiative to have a preliminary record about our own uh, uh, species of butterflies so today let me welcome uh, dr kailash chandrasar on behalf of zoology department ravenshah university and all uh, and on behalf of the butterfly big butterfly month celebration uh, uh, committees to this uh, uh, webinar to speak on lepidoptera as potential indicator taxa for tracking climate change in indian himalayan landscape as well as i would like to in the welcome dr okay rebra merema devi madam who will be uh, talking on uh, butterflies as climate change indicators these are two interesting topics to be discussed today with these words i welcome you both uh, madam and sir to our uh, discussion forum now over to dipti uh, dr dipti rao to introduce the guest thank you consciousness in him that struck me the most when i had an opportunity to meet him quoting john ruskin i believe the first test of a truly great man is in his humility the first speaker of this evening dr kailash chandra is humility personified in our strides of biodiversity learning sensitization and research partnerships we look up to the zoological survey of india as a premier institution it is therefore a privilege to give you insights of the academic career journey of dr kailash chandra leading the institution as director of zoological survey of india kolkata ministry of environment forest and climate change india an alumnus of kanpur university he went on to obtain his doctorate from kurukshetra university in 1986 with a research career spanning over 38 years his quest for knowledge began in the division of entomology indian agricultural research institute new delhi and later malaria research center of icmr then began long and productive associations with different units of the zoological survey of india from the high altitude regional center solan himachal pradesh to central zone regional center jabalpur to the andaman and nicobar regional center port blair and finally headquarters kolkata the journey has been decisive momentous he has to his credit a number of research papers and books as outcomes of over 22 research projects and 43 surveys from scarabid beetles to ethnobiological studies of the jarawa tribes to faunal diversity explorations of different taxa across the indian peninsula region besides a challenging study of biota in the shimasha oasis of the polar region antarctica the quest for the unknown has been exemplary and relentless in a long list of the outcomes of his completed and ongoing projects his contributions in the documentation of fauna are commendable and will remain a classic reference for researchers 64 books 278 research papers 328 book chapters many published papers from conference proceedings and more constitute about 853 research publications he has to his credit 86 genera and species described new to science a new marine species of snake eel residing in the bay of bengal was cited recently by scientists of zsi as a tribute to dr kailash chandra's vast contributions to biodiversity research this eel has been named after him as opishtas kailash chandrai truly laudable and inspiring as i glanced through an invariably long list of his achievements his works on lepidopterans caught my attention from pictorial handbooks on butterflies and more so specific regions of india to lepidoptera as potential indicator taxa for climate change i realized it was a treasure trove of knowledge and perfect to be shared this evening for the big butterfly month india 2020 initiative let's listen in to him esteemed sir it is over to you now thank you very much dr dipti raut uh, for your candid introduction although it was not uh, needed uh, today uh, i'm happy and i'm thankful to uh, honorable vice chancellor uh, dr rishan ke patro uh, ravensar university which is a friend of mine uh, i'm fortunate that uh, i was with him in kurukshetra university from where i did my phd during 1986 and uh, uh, then since then we have a very good uh, association uh, thank you very much uh, patro sahab for in your invitation Uh, to entire our faculty of uh, department of geology professor luna samanta uh, head of department of geology dr uh, lipika patnaik 
then Dr. Nilipta Swain, Dr. Deepti Raut, who is coordinating this uh, seminar on the Big Butterfly Month 2020. Uh, it's a really very, very important uh, uh, month, uh, which is being organized during the month of September every year. And this genesis is uh, already, uh, you might have heard, is during the studies program uh, in which uh, Mr. Uh, Sohal Madan uh, gave a lot of information about the butterfly conservation, how the citizen science uh, could help in the conservation of the species, particularly the butterflies. What I would like to uh, mention here in the today's uh, uh, webinar, that although a lot of general information has been shared uh, today, uh, my presentation would be quite a technical one, with the region being uh, JSI has been uh, involved in the study of uh, all the species of animals starting from the protozoa for the last 105 years of its genesis, uh, which started uh, from Indian Museum, the Asiatic Society, uh, Kolkata, and then from 1916 onwards, we have been undertaking the survey of the whole country. And at present, uh, there are 5.6 million specimens which are in the position as a repository uh, with Geological Survey of India at its headquarter, uh, Kolkata. And there are 16 regional centers throughout India. Uh, butterfly is one of the aspect uh, which is belonging to the order Lepidoptera. It's very, very important uh, group of insects that includes more than 10% of the species among the insects that has been actually studied by JSI. So what you would, uh, I would be presenting today, this is just up, uh, one of the case study which we have undertaken uh, during 2017 to 2020 uh, in one of the national mission of the Himalayan Studies Project uh, to study as a Lepidoptera, as a tracking for the climate change, what has been the population earlier, what is happening now because of the climate change, particularly the Himalaya. Uh, I would like to just share uh, the information with uh, regard to the animals. There are uh, uh, two groups of animals like uh, butterflies and birds, which uh, have been studied very, very extensively and intensively. And as we have a lot of enthusiasts and the immature bird watcher, and the whole year, more than lakhs of people have been uh, watching the birds across the country and the whole world. Similarly, the butterfly, amateur, actually scientists, amateur workers are also there. They have been watching the butterflies. Yesterday, I have listened to Mr. Uh, Sohal Madan, who said that uh, throughout India, this uh, big butterfly month is being celebrated, and the count of the butterflies have been going on, and they come to know what is the species which are available at present. So that is one of the important information. What is happening? It's not only the random collection that we make from the different places, and we just collect them, we preserve, and then identify, and that becomes so one of the uh, locality records. But until unless we have the periodic survey of all the species of the animals, including the lepidopterans, we will not be able to assess what is actually happening, whether all those species which have been recorded earlier are present in the nature uh, or uh, they have just become the sting, they have become the three ten different category, categories under IUCN or uh, even then there are many species which have been recorded under Wildlife Protection Act. Uh, I will just uh, go to my uh, presentation. Uh, I do not know whether it will be shared. Is it visible now so that I can explain it in a detail? Dr. Tipti Raut? Presentation. Uh, may I share my presentation? Yes, sir. Please share. Is it, is it visible? No, not yet. Okay. Just I'm sharing. One second. Hmm? 
help you how you can uh, just share it. Mm. Now, is it visible, madam? Dr. Raut? Yes, sir. Is it shared? Yes, sir. Now, is it shared? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, I'm just uh, uh, making my presentation. The title is... Uh, Lepidoptera as a potential indicator taxa for tracking climate change in Indian Himalayan landscape. As I have mentioned, this uh, program uh, we have undertaken, which was given by the Ministry of Environment and Forest Climate Change under one of the uh, mission, that is national mission of the Himalayan studies. Uh, many of the participants, they would be knowing about JSI. It was established uh, on 1st July two, uh, 1916. And uh, the main objective um, is to promote survey, exploration, and the seed research on the exceptionally rich fauna diversity of the country and the taxonomy towards uh, conservation and sustaining biodiversity, fauna diversity for the future. And there are several uh, uh, motto or the mission statement. Uh, one of the major is to contribute towards the monitoring and the conservation of the fauna by conducting a status survey of the wildlife protected species, undertaking taxonomic studies and documenting the vast country's uh, diversity, particularly the fauna. And then the major uh, goal is from extinction to existence and describing all the undiscovered fauna of the country, which is not yet known, then exploring all the ecosystem, starting from the deep sea to the Himalayas, then digitizing entire our collection of the species, the DNA barcoding of the, and the capacity building for all the students, researchers on different aspects as of geology, then identification of the wildlife seized material through the modern tools, geospatial modeling and long-term monitoring for the conservation, then contributing to the national and international agenda on biodiversity conscious. So these slides, give this information about the national geological collection on entire fauna of the country in our headquarters, Kolkata, and the regional, all the 16 regional centers. We have about 5.6 million specimens and several thousands of the slides in JSI, which is the reference collection. And that we always give the access that is called as a voucher specimen, and all those specimens are registered. They have got the registration number. So by the registration number, they could be accessed. We can share this information with any the universities, colleges, schools, and geological park, NGOs. And besides these reference collections, we do have this uh, type collections on the basis of which all the new species are uh, described. And it's not only from the India, but from 56 different countries JSI is uh, purchasing the collections. So, under uh, the what is actually the role for uh, Geological Survey of India uh, among uh, the insects that is the Lepidoptera conservation under the Ministry of Environment and Forest is the JSI is one of the largest repository of geological specimens, including the Lepidoptera insects, and these valuable collections are designated as the National Geological Collections. The Lepidoptera section of JSI, as of now, holds about uh, more than one lakh specimens, identified around 60,000, and around 40,000 are unidentified. We do have the collection of the uh, D. Nicefele, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jordan, then Dr. Cooper, Cooper, and Evans. All those collections, old and heritage collection, is available with uh, JSI, not only from our India part, but before even the division of our country that we called as Indian sub subcontinents, the collection from the Afghanistan, Balochistan, Myanmar, China, Russia, Indonesia, Malaysia, even from the other continents like Australia, New Guinea, Africa, Paris, and Britain, those collections are also available with JSI, particularly as far as the butterflies and moths are concerned. 
so broad objectives uh, covered in uh, the presentation are to educate and inculcate the skills in researchers towards lepidoptera taxonomy and their role in environment to protect rare and endangered species of the lepidoptera of the moths and butterflies and to use lepidoptera as a target group to assess uh, biodiversity and to create public awareness about these fascinating insects so many of you might have heard the name of uh, carl linnaeus to whom we call as a father of taxonomy and uh, he wrote a book that is on the 10th edition of the uh, linnaeus that is systema naturae and wherein he has uh, described more than 7700 plant as well as 4400 animal species since last 2000 uh, uh, sorry 262 years of uh, modern taxonomy now we have been uh, recording the species from our country and i do know that uh, our uh, country india is one of the mega diversity country among 17 countries and there are uh, 102161 species of animals recorded from our country and within that there are 28000 species are endemic to the india and within this uh, our country the area is around 2.3% of the global uh, geographical area of the world which possesses around 6 to 7% of the total species of the plant and animals so we have been maintaining the entire species database in geological survey of india of all the group of uh, uh, animals as well as the protista which we now uh, kept in a different kingdom as well as the entire invertebrates including insects spiders ticks mites earthworms crabs molluscs worms sponges and the marine invertebrates and the vertebrates that include fishes amphibia reptilia and uh, birds and the mammals so uh, these if you see that india is ranking in the earth in the, in the world so not only the all our states and union territories uh, which jdsi has been the fauna of uh, all the states and their uh, entire fauna from protozoa to mammalia but all the ecosystems are also being surveyed like marine the coastal areas then fresh water and then the himalayas estuarine uh, areas the mangrove ecosystem islands then soil and sea grass and and you may get the information about all these ecosystem the books are already published like in marine we have a 20444 species from fresh water 9456 species and the himalayas 30377 species from maturin 3392 species from mangrove ecosystem 4822 species from islands 11900 species then soil fauna that we call as below ground fauna 22566 species of animals have been recorded and the sea grass that is within the marine ecosystem 1000 1059 species have been recorded this is with regard to the insect diversity which uh, we have been cataloging in jdsi there are the three classes like columbola protura and the diplura and then within the insecta which is also the class Uh, there are the 26 orders and in all together now 65409 species of the insects have been recorded the maximum species have been recorded on the order coleoptera you can see here, 22299 species then second most uh, species uh, species uh, uh, group is the lepidoptera that includes around 12500 species from india followed by the hymenoptera diptera then hemiptera orthoptera trichoptera and other group of insects so this is just uh, uh, some information may be of some interest to the students and participants so now what is uh, the liking what is a black hole of taxonomy although we do have a lot of information about all the group of animals starting from the protozoa to mammalia but uh moles actually the significance and importance has not yet been given to all the species and still there are many gap areas the group wise as well as the area wise and there are many species which are still not named and have been described 
uh, by the scientist. And there was a uh, taxonomic impediment, which uh, everyone have, have to just work on it. So as you could see it here in this particular uh, slide already, out of about 10 million species, which had been estimated in a very conservative way, hardly 1.7 million species of the plants and animals have been actually named and described. So still there are about 80% of the species which are to be named and then this, this would be described. So that is a very, very significant part where all of us can join together and work on it because only JSI or any other organization who are working on the taxonomic uh, area or those species will not be able to cover the all the species. And that is why everyone have, have to join it. So out of uh, one lakh species, which I have mentioned here, around uh, 76,149 species of arthropods are reported from India. And only the insects, they are the 65,000 plus species. And globally, uh, around 157,570 species are known globally. And now we have the information from India. Uh, as per our information, it's around 12,500 species. That is the second most uh, insect order in India. So if you see this uh, in total, our publications, as well as uh, uh, our, our scientific fields. So if you share it, that's for our diversity, which is known worldwide. Only 3% of the species of the animals, they belong to the vertebrates and the invertebrates. There are more than 79. As per our uh, JSI data in India, it's more than 90% of the invertebrates. And the plants are just 18%. So in together, plants and animals, if you'll see vertebrates 3% and invertebrates 79% and the plants 18% are there. As far as the... Uh, conservation of the research articles are concerned, which are published. More than around 70% of the articles are published on the vertebrates itself, and they pertain to 3% of the species. However, in invertebrates, they are giving less importance, although play a major uh, role in ecosystem services, livelihood, and many other services, but they have not yet been given due significance and importance uh, till now. And regarding the plants, only 20% of the publications are made. So uh, as far as the order, Lepidoptera is concerned, this is the largest uh, phytophagous insect orders, and they are also indicator of the vegetations. So as for the vegetation only, we'll be having this our, uh, species of the butterflies and moths, because they are mostly the phytophagous species, as well as the polyphagous. Only few of the species of the butterflies are there, they are a specific uh, having the specific host plant so they could be conserved only when those host plant species are there they are mostly widespread species uh, particularly the moths but butterflies are having the endemic in many of the islands as well as uh, in different uh, biogeographic zones if you'll see it in whole india uh, like uh, in western ghat there are many, uh, many endemic species in the northeastern region of our country, then Andaman, Nicobar Islands, and then the Himalayan region, they have a lot, lot of uh, endemic uh, elements. So uh, they include the butterflies, like including the skipper, uh, skippers and the moths. This group comprises about 10% of the entire fauna of our animals, like more than 102,000 uh, species are known. Uh, only 12,500 are belonging to the order Lepidoptera. And they are, uh, they are recognized due to their body and the wings covered with the scales. That is one of the major character by which we can identify the group uh, Lepidoptera. And this is just, again, the information. So in India, around uh, 89 families uh, are there, which includes 12,500 species of the moths and butterfly. And the butterfly, uh, butterfly fauna is very, very rich. And they include around 1,350 species. And there are around 1,650 species of the subspecies belonging to 320 genera, which is about 9% of the total butterfly diversity of the world. Although we do not have many endemic species among moths because they are widely distributed, 
uh, in many of the continents. However, the butterflies are endemic, and they have there are about 1,500 species which are endemic to our country. So they are the most uh, beautiful gift of nature to the mankind. Uh, so I understand who will love the nature, and they are uh, uh, very very affectionate. Uh, they tend towards actually study this geology and botany and then start working on different kind of our, uh, animals and plants and they are god god gifted i can say those who love the nature i do not uh, understand that any time they will be having any problem at least a psychological problem and they devote a lot of time in the field and that's why this is very very important if we go to the field and we are very near to the nature probably many of our diseases may not be happening there. So since we are getting modern and uh, very, very uh, advanced and high technology, uh, our sustained people and we dependent on uh, many of our uh, uh, logistic things. That's why now we are getting all these problems. Even the whole world has become a uh, village and that's, that's the entire our population from one place to another place is moving frequently. And that has become the major cause of our corona pandemic uh, during this year. And several lakh people already actually we have lost the life of our uh, citizen of the world. So this is also one of the uh, fact, uh, what we can say, it's because of the minus point uh, to have a global village. And that is major cause of this uh, pandemic, which is causing uh, to the whole world. So. Uh, we should be very near to the nature and we should understand what are those species, what are, where they are living, their habit, what uh, the ecosystem uh, role they are playing in the nature. Because until unless we know their significance and importance, we'll never tend to conserve them. So if you go to the field, we have the keen uh, watch on them. And then if for a uh, long period, they have been also a part of our culture. and then. Uh, our aesthetic sense, even many of the drawing, many of our cloths, our design, jewelry, they have been used uh, like a butterfly. And above all, they are also the indicator of the health environment. If there are no butterflies uh, and the moths, at least we can understand that the health of that area, the vegetation uh, of that area will not be uh, very, very good. And these are some of the uh, characters by which one can identify uh, the butterflies and uh, particularly the order uh, Lepidoptera, that wings have the dense covering of the broad scale. So they are uh, a scale winged insect. That's why the, the medium oscillus is lost. Those characters are given. I'm not going to detail. These are available. So particularly this, how this genesis of Lepidoptera and how was uh, its relations to the mankind. Many of you may be knowing our uh, silk we have been using for the time immemorial, particularly this our uh, silk, Bombix morai, that is um, we call it the mulberry silk, that was used from the time uh, 4700 BC. And then sericulture occupied an important part of peasant, must have been uh, normal life of the farmers and everyone, particularly in the China between 4000 to 3000 BC. So at least more than uh, 5,000, uh, 6,000 to 5 years before this had been actually known, uh, the insects. However, till 20th century, Labdoptera were best known as the competitor of the human being for various economic important cash crops. Uh, it's actually myth for all of us who are uh, having the concern about the conservation of the Labdoptera butterfly as well as the moths. Many of these insects have been considered as a pest but for us, those who are engaged with the conservation studies, there are very few percentage of the species of the moths, uh, which are uh, the important of the major crops. Our maximum or the major number of the species are uh, playing a lot of role in ecosystem services, including this our uh, pollination, and they are the fruits of uh, many of the animals. So every time we should not consider these. Uh, uh, creatures like particularly the moths, even some of the butterfly as a pest, uh, as we have been seeing it earlier. So with the uh, 21st uh, century, which is uh, actually focusing more on the 
uh, role of these uh, creatures, butterflies and um, moths. And they are the important pollinators, indicators of the climate change, forest health, and as environmental canaries. And they also help in assessing the climate change, particularly in the pollination and the diversity of the other species uh, like the vegetation and the various habitats. So uh, I'm coming back to the uh, pro program which we have uh, undertaken last three years. This is uh, one of the case study where we have worked that is a Lepidoptera as a potential indicator taxa for tracking climate change in Indian Himalayan state, uh, landscape. Uh, the, this Indian Himalayan landscape is starting from the Jammu and Kashmir up to the Arunachal Pradesh covering six states we have worked in the uh, some of the protected area. This you can see, this is one of the uh, biogeographic uh, zone in our country. There are 10 biogeographic zones which have been classified uh, by the Wildlife Institute of India. And uh, Himalaya includes two biogeographic zones. One is the Trans-Himalaya and the second is the Himalayan region. So two uh, our biogeographic zones are included here. And from Jammu and Kashmir up to the Arunachal Pradesh, the length is around 2,500 kilometers. And this is actually one of uh, the biodiversity hotspot uh, in India. And all these states, we have selected some of the uh, protected area. And this is actually the region uh, which uh, is having a very, very old uh, uh, plate uh, as far as the uh, evolution is concerned. This came from the our Gondwana region and the India has gone up to the Himalayan and attached to the Eurasia. And that's why this uh, Himalaya rose there. So this is the genesis of more than 55 million years ago, the Himalayan origin. And this entire information on the faunal diversity was already uh, published by Geological Survey of India. That book is uh, already available in the website, starting from the protozoa to mammalia, that includes uh, more than 30,377 species. If you uh, see this list, and you can just uh, see this uh, uh, publication, uh, Fauna Diversity of Indian Himalaya, anyone can access it. And if you uh, search in the website in JSI or any other uh, Google, one can get it. So under this project, uh, that is Lepidoptera as a potential indicator for taxa, uh, for tracking change in the Indian Himalayan region. So these are uh, protected areas were uh, taken up. That is the Hemis National Park, Great Himalayan National Park, then Govin Wildlife Sanctuary, Ascot Wildlife Sanctuary, then Neura Valley uh, National Park, the Hang Dibang Vast Reserve, Nam uh, National Park in the Arunachal Pradesh. And they are in the different biogeographic provinces of the Trans Himalaya as well as the Himalaya biogeographic zone. So, this is the background Indian Himalayan uh, region due to its uh, sheer latitudinal and altitudinal expanse, arbor diverse biomes and the habitats if you compare it with any of other provinces and biogeographic uh, zone in India. In Indian Himalayan states, that is Jan Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, West Bengal, and Arunachal Pradesh were considered. And this we also call as a uh, uh, transitional zone between the indo malayan and the Palearctic uh, Jew geographic realms. So particularly the northeastern region, they are the neck for uh, having the influx of the elements from the Palearctic as well as the indo malayan and Indo-Chinese regions. So most of the fauna uh, is getting intermixed from these areas. So these are the areas where uh, we have undertaken the uh, survey and then we have studies, uh, these are the, like Hemis National Park is uh, there in the Ladakh, Great Himalayan National Park is in Himachal Pradesh, Escort Wildlife Sanctuary is there in Uttar, uh, Uttarakhand, then Kanchanjengal Pasphe Reserve is in uh, Sikkim, Shangalila National Park is there in West Bengal, the Hang Devang Pasphe Reserve is there in Arunachal Pradesh. So these diverse protected areas from the six states were uh, covered for this particular study. And within these, uh, our six protected areas, 175 long-term ecological monitoring plots 
were established across the Indian Himalaya, which are uh, shown in this map, starting from the Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, then Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, then above part of the Sikkim, and then uh, West Bengal, including this uh, Arunachal Pradesh. In the different uh, latitude, uh, altitude, starting from 94 uh, meter up to the 8,522 meters. So our uh, uh, staff and the project people who have been working in this pro uh, project have been staying there continuously for three years, and they have collected the sample, selected samples, and the uh, main objective were uh, to investigate the different uh, differential process in influencing the diversity and distribution pattern of the Lepidoptera assemblies, particularly the moths and butterflies, then repeating monitoring surveys in the historical collection localities, originally carried out by the earlier workers, and the generating current species distribution map from primary as well as the secondary data. As I mentioned here, we have a lot of historical data uh, on the moths and butterflies from the Himalayan region, which have been the focus point for the collection by the uh, earlier workers. So those databases are to be compared with the present uh, or database. Then only we can find out whether those species are still existing there or not. And then the third objective was to evaluate status and the distribution of Thetan, Apollo, and other Parnassini butterfly and preparing habitat suitability map. These butterflies are very, very important butterflies. They are only known from the high altitude region of the Himalaya. They are called as a Bartolo butterflies. And in the international market, they are having very, very high value from $100 uh, dollar even to even more than that. And they are just kept as a trophies in their uh, homes. And that's why a lot of fascination is there. They are, they are being collected from the Himalayan region. And their population is declining uh, very much from these ecosystem. And not only that, to, to have this our classical data, uh, the morphological data of these species, but to have the genetic uh, distinctness of the Lepidoptera species commonly occurring in the Western, Central, and the East Himalaya through the DNA barcoding to resolve species complexes and cryptic species, thus generating a barcode database for the future molecular and the phylogenetic researches on the Himalayan Lepidoptera. So these are the four actually data set before uh, going to the field we have started taking up. That is the past literature. So whatever the species have been recorded from the Himalayan region, we have compiled the information. Then what were, we have validated all those species, current name, whether they are the correct. And there may be a lot of synonym species that have been combined together. And then only we have the correct number of species, how many species are existing in any of the landscape. Then their uh, latitude, longitude of those species collected earlier in our historical data that we call as a geo coordinate extracted then primary sampling we started after having the proper planning and then species identification was there entire database was put in the excel sheet and then we have compared those species and we got as far as uh, this butterflies are concerned from himalaya itself this uh, 220 species of the hesperidae and 153 species of the papillonidae in pyridae, 83 species, rhyodidae, 18 species, lysinidae, uh, 312 species, and the maximum number of species were recorded, the jidnipardine. So this is on the basis of our historical data, what has been collected from there, and that included 1,249 subspecies and 1,013 species of the butterflies, reported from the Indian Himalayan regions. So as we understand, there are 1,350 species known from the whole country. However, we got the record of uh, 1,013 species only from the Indian Himalayan region. This information was not known earlier, but when we have taken up uh, this study, we could find that more than 75% of the 70% of the species are known only from these two biogeographic provinces, that is uh, Trans Himalaya and the uh, Himalaya, that covers around 14% of the uh, area of our whole country. And we also found out what are the species uh, rich 
particularly from the various states, starting from the Jammu and Kashmir, then Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, West Bengal, then Sikkim, and the Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal Pradesh was having the maximum number of species recorded of the butterflies in India as far as the Himalayan region is concerned. So out of uh, 1013 species, around 700 species were only recorded or known from the Arunachal Pradesh. So this is about this moths, family-wise species, business of the moths. Uh, earlier, there was not much information about the moth species, uh, actually uh, information from all these states. However, on the butterflies, it was quite better information, particularly from the Arunachal and the northeastern region. Uh, but when we have compiled the information of all these species through our uh, historical data, as well as the reference collection, available in JSI, including the publications of the whole country, uh, then we could uh, get at least 4,107 validated species of the moths, and that was also published in the book, Indian Himalaya, from Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, this uh, 56 or uh, unique sampling localities were, so these are the number of localities where the sampling was made, and this is the number of species uh, which we have recorded of the moth species. And the maximum number of the moth species were recorded from the Sikkim, only one state, that is uh, 2,168 species were recorded only from the Sikkim, followed by the Uttarakhand, then it was from the West Bengal, Arunachal Pradesh, and then Jammu and Kashmir, that is uh, actually the Ladakh region. So we undertook this uh, Moth species richness modeling from the historical uh, records and the entire our collection we have put in the geospatial uh, database. We could found that these species which are there in the Sikkim, uh, so they are the maximum uh, one, and from other states they were also recorded. Uh, so that in the present contest, when we undertake the survey and the sampling of uh, all these protected area, we can compare that how many species are still existing there. So this is actually historical and present moth sampling localities across the Indian Himalayan region. And this area, we have selected those who are the red dots. They are the area actually where uh, we have uh, uh, taken up uh, the collection because we have not undertaken the survey of all the states covering the whole region. Only the protected six, uh, seven protected areas that have been selected for the sampling. And then we have found that uh, under these our uh, uh, Himalayan, Indian Himalayan region, the maximum number of species of different uh, uh, families recorded, the maximum was the family Arabidae, that is 903 species followed by the geometry, which uh, they, we call it as the Himalayan, actually the fauna. Then 879 species of the geometric were uh, recorded from the Indian Himalayan region. Then we have undertaken the repeat survey of uh, these protected areas. This you can see the red mark covering the ra round circle. And from these regions, starting from the Hemis uh, National Park, then Great Himalayan National Park, uh, Ascot Wildlife Sanctuary, then Singalila National Park, and then Namdapa. Uh, national, national Park in the um, Arunachal Pradesh. So we have compared this data and we have found that uh, from the Bhimtal area, Govind Wildlife Sanctuary, the Darjeeling Hills, the Dharamsala and the Simla, these were the localities where the historical collection was made and they were the points where the number of uh, the species started from 157 up to the 787 species from these local TG itself. So these areas were selected to compare the present database with the old database and see the differences. And then sampling design was developed, having the quadrant and the different region, different altitude. And then we have undertaken this recursion Iraqi survey in these protected areas in a particular distance. And each tangent was 500 meter along and sampled for 30 minutes between the nine hour morning up to the one, hour, one p.m. afterwards. 
afternoon and walking through an imaginary uh, this uh, five square uh, 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 meter box that whatever the species were collected that we have taken up. So within these areas, 175 or long term uh, uh, ecological monitoring plots were established in five protected areas. And they, they were surveyed by our uh, researchers continuously. These are the species which I have collected. They were photographed from there. So we have uh, made very, very selective collection when we find that such and such species uh, uh, a sample is required. And the number was noted. It may not to collect all the specimens which are uh, available there. Only sample, then observations were made. So belonging to all the species, whether it's nymphalidae, the nymphalidae, the our uh, papillonidae, the, the lysinids. Then the species richness map of moss from the primary uh, sapling which was already uh, available there from the ash coat, the Nevra Valley, and the Pram Nam Dafa National Park. And these areas were compared what were the other collections. So we got a lot of interesting uh, findings from there. And some of the species which were uh, previously distributed up to 2,500 meter altitude in the Himalayan region. They were, uh, were recorded uh, uh, up to the 3,577 meter, particularly in Ascot Wildlife Sanctuary, Uttarakhand. And then we found those species distribution. They have gone ascending worse because of the change in the uh, vegetation and this uh, temperature actually is also getting uh, is increasing. So that's why due to adaptation and the change in uh, their habitat, they are going uh, towards a higher altitude. Uh, like another species, Indian Red Admiral was recorded from Ladakh at uh, uh, 4,853 meter elevation, which was previously known from the 3000. So around 900 uh, meter elevation in Ladakh region, it has gone towards uh, upper side. So that's new, very, very interesting finding with regard to the new records, uh, which were not known from the different uh, uh, landscape in Indian Himalaya were recorded. So these were actually the studies we have uh, uh, seen for all the families, how they have been actually shifting from the low altitude to the, uh, towards the higher altitude. And it was more prevalent towards the lysinidae as the, the pyridae uh, families of the butterflies. Here we have seen the more uh, how were the papillonidae and the nepalids were having the less, although they were recorded from the uh, higher attitude in the Himalaya up to the 5,000 meters. And similarly for the papillonids of more than 5,000 uh, meters. So these studies. Then uh, the potential indicator species for climate change uh, monitoring were also made. And then eight species were restricted to the specialized habitats in the uh, alpine meadows like uh, Neuris genus and the two species of the Nactoidae and the one species of the Na another species, three genera of the Nactoidae and uh, a prefactida from the family Arabidae. So all these eight species were specialized only the Indian Himalayan. They are not yet known from other region in the uh, our country. Then high altitude areas of uh, Ascot Wildlife Sanctuary, that is Uttarakhand, are most diverse assemblage of high altitude restricted species. And they are the prior, uh, priority site for the habitat conservation. So those uh, areas could be even designated as the protected area for the conservation of the butterflies and the moth species, since uh, that was having the um, highest actually number of species. Then species richness across the different uh, altitude was also analyzed uh, with the actually the sample collection which was made from the Himalayan region in the northwestern and up to the 3000 meter and 3005 meter altitudinal band was the richness of the maximum species were recorded in between these uh, altitude while in Arunachal Pradesh highest richness was uh, documented about 3500 meters so that is the variation from across the re uh, region up to the Western Himalaya, then the Central Himalaya, and the Eastern Himalaya region. In Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, from 1,000 meter to 15,000 meter uh, altitude zone had a high species richness. So after having the 
database and the collection locality of all the species these our informations were gathered species richness across different uh, vegetation classes was also analyzed and in the trans himalayan sector of jammu and kashmir uh, uh, where we have less than 500 mm of the rainfall uh, representing the alpine slope vegetation had the major species of the distribution record and the tem temperate conifer forest and the tropical moist deciduous forest associated with the 1500 to 2000 millimeter rainfall zone having the maximum species richness across the himalaya so that also was a significant output and then uh, this trend of the ascending actually attitudinal range extension was uh, also uh, uh, studied and observed among many of the species uh, of the moths and the butterflies here we'll see this graph that uh, actually if you will see the comparison with the, our historical data we can find that they have even uh, crossed more than 2000 meter differences where they have been recorded earlier so this is all because of the impact of climate change and uh, they are going towards uh, the higher uh, upward attitudinal range extensions so in fact 17 species of the butterflies and 49 species of the moths have shown considerable upward attitudinal range extension uh, not only this uh, impact of climate change we want also wanted to have a database on the actually dna barcode of all those species sample which were collected from the himalayan uh, landscape and from all these or samples of different families like geometridi eribidi noctuidi crambidi spingidi nolidi nymphalidi then 14 other families we have actually uh, extracted the dna through their uh, one of the part of the lake and then they have been sequenced in our laboratory itself and all those data uh, have been submitted to the board and ncbi database and 264 uh, bins that is called as a data um, dna um, barcodes uh, many of them have been identified up to the generic level that have been submitted and for this uh, study of the cryptic species particularly uh, some of the genera where we are not able to identify on the basis of the morphological characters first we have studied the genitalia of those species and they were also studied through dna barcoding then only we have been able to decide what are the morpho species and how they are different from each other so that has helped us to solve the our uh, sibling species and the cryptic species which are not been able to identify on the basis of uh, morphological characters so this studies we have undertaken there and all those things are uh, already available in our uh, literature and published uh, information many of them have been published in the floss uh, uh, one uh, journal as well as the uh, um, scientific reports and one can see it there so these were the findings actually in a nutshell i can say we have uh, uh, actually established 175 uh, long term ecological monitoring plots uh, across seven landscapes so that will become the permanent and from these uh, monitoring plots more than 10000 individuals of the butterflies and moths were collected uh, and these species uh, uh, were collected in a very selective way. so that we have the database from all the locality point and from different uh, 30 different vegetation types they were collected so that's why this number has gone to 10000 however the number of species are uh, not uh, very less so uh, we can find that here the 484 species of the butterflies were recorded under 222 genera representing 29 sub families under six families so uh, out of 1000 species which were already known from the indian himalayan region within 3 years we have found them physically and they have been collected uh, 400 around 50% of the species have been collected so we assume that the number of species will be much more what we have the record and if you go through i think much more extensive and intensive uh, survey of these areas the number of species even may increase uh, in the future 
Similarly, for the butter or uh, moth species, out of 4,000 species which were already known for last 260-year database, in the present survey, 1,274 species of moth species under 704 genera, representing 89 subfamilies and 25 families, and 12 subfamilies, superfamilies were recorded from the Indian land span. So, so we could have this or uh, uh, information on the Indian uh, uh, Lepidoptera from the Himalayan region and uh, from different uh, vegetations, uh, particularly those species, uh, species which were recorded in the historical data, they were compared and then we could find what is the impact of climate change and their assemblage, particularly this abundance. Uh, many of the species were described new to the science and then uh, 17 species of the butterflies and 49 species of the moths, they showed the considerable upward attitudinal range uh, extension. And more than 80 species were recorded for the first time from India, apart from the new species described. And all that information is now published in one of the book, uh, which is available in JSI, that is assemblages of the Lepidoptera in Indian Himalaya, through long-term monitoring plots, uh, written by uh, some of our uh, colleagues, Dr. Vikas Kumar is mal, actually DNA barcoding expert. Then Dr. Navneet Singh is uh, actually the experts on the moths and butterfly, and then project staff. More than 12 uh, project staff they have been working for the last four years uh, in this project. This uh, particular uh, document uh, is having the photograph of all the species more than 2,000 species photographs are already there of the moths and butterflies. And they are all uh, taken by Geological Survey of India. Another project which was uh, taken up by one of our uh, uh, colleagues in JSI, that is assessment of moths as a significant pollinators in eastern Himalayas. So far, we have been knowing only about uh, butterflies and some of the bees that they play a major role in the pollinators. But this uh, uh, program, which is first of its kind in India, we have taken up. Now we are understanding what is the role of these uh, nocturnal uh, uh, moth species in the pollination of the vegetation. So the um, overall objective was to study the forest flora and the crop of the Himalayan region of the Northeast India. In one of the states, it has been taken up. And what is the moth assemblage? Uh, majority associated with the pollination species. So this is actually the, uh, we have uh, extracted the uh, proboscis from the moth species and around 705 proboscis were isolated from the moth samples and among the 705 samples, 468 proboscis were processed by the presence of the pollens through scanning electron microscopes and uh, several uh, hundreds of the slides were uh, prepared and out of them, 67 moth species, which were identified up to the species level, were found to be the positive for pollens. So we are getting a lot of information about these moth species that they also play a major role in the pollination, particularly the forest and the shrub vegetation. And they are pertaining to different even the families like geometry, spingity, hawk moths, then erivids. Uh, the notodentity, noctuidity, and then it was assessed that 13.3 percent of the moths are potential pollinators. This is as per the information which have been collected just only for the last two years, and it's first of its kind. And these pollens in the proboscis were identified through the experts in Botanical Survey of India and other organizations, and all of them have been photographed through scanning electron microscopes. So there are several actually threats. Many of you are already uh, aware about this butterflies diversity and uh, their population is uh, declining uh, because of this uh, habitat fragmentations, then use of the pesticides and weedy sites in agriculture and urban landscapes. So whatever the butterflies we have been seeing in and around our gardens, that is that number is not uh, available and the species are also getting away. I'm happy at least uh, Ravensa University 
uh, is going to catalog or the inventory the uh, entire species of the butterflies in their uh, uh, campus and then they will understand that around more than 50 species of the butterflies will be certainly there if they can also record this uh, host plant that would be quite interesting and our uh, White Lancer uh, has already been found, uh, so they want to have a forest patch within the university, so that is not disturbed, and uh, that becomes like the gene pool for the, I think, evolution as well as uh, uh, the in situ conservation of these uh, species of the butterflies. So already the trade had been going on. It was uh, very much popular earlier in northeastern region, and then trophies were made through these uh, butterflies, but because of the Wildlife Protection Act, which was enacted in 1972, uh, these activities had uh, reduced. This is the butterfly, Apollo butterfly, which I was mentioning. And this is status survey of Apollo butterfly. We have taken up in uh, Himalayan region, and their population is declining uh, very much, maybe hardly 20% uh, those uh, actually population is still there, 80% we have already list. Although there are a lot of uh, legal protection for the conservation of these species, and therefore uh, around 444 uh, species plus they have, of the butterflies, they have been kept under different uh, schedule. Uh, 128 species are kept under schedule one, 303 species of the butterflies are schedule two, 1900 species, 19 uh, species are under schedule four. So around 444 species are included. And we have already published uh, our pamphlets for the awareness program. Uh, of these are the species which are included under uh, IUCN. There are very few species of the butterflies which are kept in arthropoda. You can see entire arthropods, there are 45 species. And total number of species which are uh, threatened under uh, uh, animal species from India are around 700 species. So there are two ways of the conservation. First is the in-situ conservation, another ex-situ conservation. And that could be possible to actually the management of natural habitats and then measure to discourage the collection of butterflies for any trade or just for the trophies. And then strict enforcement of wildlife is very, very essential. Although it's not being enacted very, very sincerely, or, uh, but Particularly, whenever the uh, any collection is being made by the foreigners, I think that is uh, then it is seized and sent to Jodhisai for identification so that they could be prosecuted. A forestation program on a large scale is very much required. Um, I appreciate the efforts of our uh, vice chancellor that is taking up some step to, so that at least some of those species they are conjured uh, there in the campus. Then. The study of the threatened and endemic species, which are only present in our country, we want to have the uh, detailed information. What are the distribution record? If any of the species which is host specific found in a particular uh, area, and if that vegetation is uh, lost from that particular place, then we'll be losing that species, and that may also become extinct from the world. It's not from a particular locality, but from country, but it may become extinct from the world. And that's why many of the organization, they have taken up this our uh, citizen science program for the public awareness across the country and the whole world. And their uh, role is very, very uh, important. Uh, being in JSI, uh, we have also been uh, taking up the outreach studies, outreach activities. Uh, for the awareness and training program. But going to each and every uh, citizen to the country, it is very difficult because the mandate which is given to JSI is a very, very technical one. First, we have to find out what are the species which have not yet been discovered, and then to describe what are the new species, uh, the new records, and then the biology, history, host plan records. So all those things are very, very important for all of us. Then only we can outreach to the each and every surgeon where i think ngos and many other organizations they can play a major role for uh, ex situ conservation uh, there are uh, several butterfly gardens uh, not only in india but throughout uh, the world and they to activate the program for the conservation of butterfly diversity in india 
particularly the species which are uh, where the population is declining of the threatened species we can have them in the butterfly gardens and then their actually numbers may be increased and released in the wild and the, the to study the biology of known species of the butterflies and evolve a strategy for the protection of species particularly the endemic species from the extinction then to study the in situ conservation of the threatened species their biology we can study what are the different uh, actually larval egg and the pupal stages then while what is the time period life cycle and then last is very very important that is dna fingerprint of all those species and their evolution what are the species they are nearer to each other and then uh, this is actually one of the open type of the butterfly garden which uh, i have visited in hong kong long back in 2006 and again the last year i have gone there and uh, this is open type of butterfly for the in situ conservation any place that could be developed for our uh, breeding uh, the butterfly species and once you know the what are the, uh, the host plant we one can very much develop it and the close type are already there in some of our uh, in our country banal ghata butterfly garden which is there in the bangalore in the butter uh, banal ghata national park that is one of the example any student participants if they are interested only the disadvantage with the close type is that that first you have to rear all those species and then you have to release in this uh, close type of the butterfly garden and my uh, take away or the way forward is to that in not to collect all the samples from the uh, natural habitat uh, particularly the butterflies and uh, moths if we get some interest uh, interesting information then only we should collect it otherwise everyone if they start collecting lot of population will be losing it and whenever they are collected or uh, they are uh, photographed particularly they could be actually compared with the historical uh, data and one can give additional distribution record then replicate sampling in established uh, long term ecological monitoring plots and one can understanding uh, understand what are the changes happening there in altitude the longitude and uh, latitude wise then temperature wise what is all happening and then identification of the more potential climate change indicator species some of them are very very uh, indicator species they are sensitive to the climate and then uh, one can understand why when there is a change in the habitat uh, then what is happening to all those uh, diversity as well as the individual species and the group of species and the last uh, that is also very very important that is dna barcoding for the study of the cryptic species complexes and phylogenetic species so i acknowledge to all my colleagues including one of uh, the scientists roger kendrick which is from asian lepidoptera conservation symposium hong kong who has been a uh, very very active in spreading the knowledge of uh, the lepidoptera across uh, asia my colleague dr navneet singh uh, joint director who has taken up the program on uh, pollinators moth pollinators in jdsi and all our project staff who have worked in this uh, our project for which i was the uh, principal investigator all of our scientists from jdsi ministry of environment and forest government of india uh last but not the least to the uh vice chancellor of our uh, ravensa university and the organizing committee for uh, this particular webinar thank you very much thank you for vice chancellor thank you madam yes madam i have completed my presentation any question or any yeah, thank you sir thank you sir uh, thank you sir uh, for your uh, scientific illustrations towards uh, the structural organizations on like conservation strategies of butterfly and the moth and you have also explained and we learned that how the black flop taxonomy exactly happens and how in the taxonomical languages how the black flop taxonomy has been illustrated very nicely on your works and also you have done a uh, lot of studies on like species richness on both butterflies moths and other species also and with that uh, i think we can uh, have 
the questions uh, from our viewers, audience, uh, and also simultaneously, uh, I like to thank for your scientific deliberations that uh, we have uh, heard it from you and it have definitely reached out the new ideas and innovations in the minds of our esteemed viewers to all our students from both undergraduate and uh, postgraduate sections, research scholars, the faculty members of the schools of life sciences, Department of Geology, Department of Botany, Department of Biochemistry, Biotechnology, and to all across the geographical areas. So I think we can have, and thank you for your illustrative scientific talk. And I like to have uh, some of the questions from the viewers. So there are questions from the viewers, I'm over to you. Uh, this is a question asked by our uh, madam, Dr. Rima Devi. Uh, the question says uh, whether you have collected and recorded the butterflies from the same area over 30 years of period. And if so, their numbers have declined or increased as the uh, result of, of the climate change. Uh, Namaskar, madam. Thanks. <laughs> uh, this is a very important question. Uh, there is no about. Uh, there is no doubt about the decline of the not only the population but uh, uh, number of species known from a particular habitat. Uh, you know already there is a habitat fragmentation, loss of habitats in many of our uh, areas in the forest, natural habitats. So already I think 30 to 40 percent loss is there. But we have to just have the exact data. Once we uh, study on uh, all those uh, species which have already been uh, having the historical record, that's why this periodic assessment is very, very important. And that has been taken up under this program. Yes, madam. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, another question is from uh, Dr. Manurma Patri. Uh, how Warming temperature has both positive and negative role on butterfly population. Sorry, please repeating. Uh, uh, increased uh, temperature. The question is, yeah, yeah. Uh, the question is from Dr. Manorma Patri, madam. So how warming yeah. temperature or the high, high temperature has both positive and negative role on butterfly population? Whenever there is an increase in the temperature, if it is a very minimum up to maybe 0.5 degrees centigrade or so, if it is more than one or two degrees centigrade, that has got the impact on the vegetation. And they are actually butterfly feeds on the host plants, that is on different species, the shrubs, side with the trees, and then uh, if they are Actually, they are changing the habitat from the lower altitude to the higher region because of the climate change. They do not survive it, particularly in the alpine region and high altitude. So once they are going upwards in the ascending direction in the Himalayan state, uh, then they are also shifted accordingly. So once vegetation is also having the impact, so that is also seen in the um, our thing. I think population of the butterflies. So that uh, actually, uh, yes, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. An another question is from our graduate student, Mausumi Behra. So she has asked uh, whether uh, uh, epigenetics are found in butterflies too, and can you explain how to differentiate between male and female butterfly from the graduate student? The question is from the graduate student. In fact, there may not be much difference uh, between the male and female because of the temperature. But uh, uh, while they are having this uh, egg that may have some impact, but not the total population of the male. Once the species is available, it will be there. But the survival of those, uh, actually, the offspring, when they uh, develop from egg to the larvae and the, the larvae to the pupae, that has got the impact the uh, temperature uh, increases. So we have another question from our postgraduate student, Vishnu Prasad Parida. Uh, he has asked whether 
uh, butterfly species are receding from their habitats due to climate change are there any opportunistic species that occupy the changing environmental patterns or habitat yes that is what i was presenting in my uh, actually uh, Himal indian himalayan state in char or uh, species how this landscape is changing and uh, because of the landscape uh, change, those uh, distribution and altitudinal change is also happening in all those uh, uh, butterflies as well as the moths it's all it is there. thank you sir yeah thank, thank you sir and i have my own questions to you also yes sir. Uh, whether uh, those cryptic, cryptic species are the uh, morphologically transformed species from the existing one due to the climate change? In fact, the cryptic, cryptic species has, uh, have already been existing. So it's not because of the climate change. No. And it's because of the adaptation, evolution, speciation. Those species are there. When there is isolation of any population for uh, maybe uh, thousands of years, so that uh, has uh, got the diversion. One population becomes another subspecies. From subspecies, that becomes the species. So that is because of the adaptation, evolution, and the process. It's not only because of the climate change. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We Thank have you. Any questions from the Mahapatra. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, how we can distinguish between male and female butterfly? The questions from one of our students. Uh, actually, those who are the scientific persons, they are uh, able to just see when they uh, just uh, uh, fresh this abdomen, last abdomen part, they are able to just see the genitalic part. So male genitalia is deeply different from the our female genitalia part. So they could understand the bicils are there, the genitalia, male genitalia, if it is there, they can distinguish the male one. And there are some morphological characters, particularly the male and female, and the morphological character also one can be. But when there is no uh, sexual dimorphism, then they have to see the through the abdomen one. Thank you, sir. Males, are, males and right. females are different in dimorphic species. And wherever there is no difference, then one has to see this uh, abdominal last segment part. Just Thank please. you, sir. I think I think there is no more questions for us. So. I'll uh, thank on behalf of the fraternity of zoology, Ravens University, under the leadership of our uh, honorable vice chancellor, sir, Professor Ishan Patra, sir. And I would like to thank you once again for accepting our invitations for today's talk also. And we look forward for your continuous support towards leveraging the goals for the studies on conservation of biodiversity as one of our esteemed collaborators. And it will immensely strengthen our scholastic endeavor. Thank you, sir. We have already been I, supporting Ravensa University. Yeah. Will we all be uh, in the collaboration? Yes, yeah, we, we have kind of uh, yeah. And we need uh, continuous support from you towards the future, also, yeah. sir. It's already there. And, uh, no need to worry yeah. about it. Thank you. Thank you. And th thank Thanks you, to this is an entire yeah. organizing committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I request uh, Dr. Shikant Jaina, sir, uh, towards uh, introduction of our next speaker. Dr. Sikhansa, please. Thank you, Dr. Soren, for giving me the opportunity to introduce such an eminent scientist of our country, Dr. O.K. Ramadevi. Dr. Ramadevi is a well known nature lover and a forefront entomologist. Earlier, she was uh, uh, working as a scientist G in Institute of uh, Food Science and Technology in Bengaluru. She is now uh, the consultant head, Center for Climate Change, Environment Management, and Policy Research Institute, Bangalore. Madam Ramadevi is basically a forest and has been extensively working on ecology of uh, insect diversity and their conservation. She is also one of the most active member in butterfly monitoring program, Karnataka. Dr. Ramadevi has received several awards and grants from different countries for her uh, outstanding research work. And the countries is like Sri Lanka, Taiwan, uh, China, <coughs> Thailand, South Africa, Belgium, and many more. She has been a recipient of many national grants from DBT, CSR, DST. She has uh, above 28 research 
uh, years of 28 years of research experience and uh, published more than 300 research papers in different journals of national and international repute. She has guided 15 PhD students and completed about 20 research projects. So in this occasion of Big Butterfly Month 2020, I think she is the best person to tell us about the most beautiful, colorful species on this planet that is butterfly. And we all the faculties from different university colleges, scientists, natural lovers, above all the students, particularly the students of Ravensa University uh, are waiting anxiously to listen you, madam. So I invite you, madam, please deliver your talk. Madam Rana Devi, please, madam. two days to celebrate the big butterfly month. So let us wish everyone a joyous and very fruitful big butterfly month. Now I am thankful to the Ravensha University Vice Chancellor and the whole uh, organizers from the zoology department and um, to organize such an important function during this big butterfly month celebration. And I congratulate the team for organizing in such a wonderful way for two days. I have been listening to the uh, the talks by Sohail and just now by Dr. Kailash Chandra. They are very illuminating talks and very, I think, the um, all the viewers would have got benefited by their knowledge through the very uh, elaborate and uh, detailed presentations. So now I go to my presentation. I'll try to share it from here. You can see. Am I able to share it? Am I able to share it, please? Am I able to share? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Is it coming? Yes, yes, madam. It's coming. Okay. Okay, yes. I'll start now. Start now. Okay, again, welcome to all the viewers. Then my topic here is Butterflies as Climate Change Indicators Butterfly Monitoring Program. I'm from the Center of Climate Change, Environmental Management and Policy Research Institute, Bangalore, and already the uh, organizer has briefed about my background so i will not go much into the uh, the um, works what i have done earlier i'll straight away go to the this presentation so i would start with telling butterflies are pretty things always whenever i hear about butterfly this poem comes to my mind written by elisa lee Follen, where she says butterflies are pretty things prettier than you or i see the colors on the wings food Hurt a butterfly. Yes. So the this is these are the thoughts which anybody gets when seeing a butterfly or hearing about a butterfly. And as all of you know, they are the flying jewels of nature. I need not introduce butterflies much because you have already heard uh, two three speeches. But still, I cannot uh, skip but say this. And butterflies and flowers add beauty to nature, 
and there is nobody on earth who will not like butterfly everyone the child young ones young uh, adults old old people everybody like butterfly why because of their good excuse me madam excuse me madam madam kindly please put it in slide so put it in slide so okay okay please okay, okay. and this height is okay. height okay thank you ma'am okay ma'am okay then so um, i have just told that butterflies are flying jewels of nature they are beauty to the nature then about butterfly diversity just now we heard dr kailash chandra telling in a very detailed way covering all gamuts of the diversity of butterflies lepidopterans including butterflies and moth so i am not going to give more details about the aspects of diversity only just briefly to tell you that uh, we, there are so many butterflies known in the world more than 18000 maybe this number has changed still and in india as he also mentioned the himkar 2008 reported 1504 dr kailash chandra was also telling there are so many butterflies and more and more species are being uh, found out and in western ghats which uh, which is a hot spot of india there are 334 butterflies species of butterflies including 37 endemics this is a report by kunte 2000 then there are records of butterflies from different parts of karnataka as well my study concentrated in karnataka and we wanted to know what are the number of species existing in karnataka so specifically in bangalore i started the study so in bangalore when we started to search the literature we found that there are no clear cut um records of distribution of by uh, the butterflies in different parts of karnataka and especially in bangalore so in bangalore our study showed yates as early as 1933 he had recorded around 140 species and the kartikeya in 1999 he recorded 153 species of butterflies but there are there is lot of gap we do not know what what are the number of butterflies species of butterflies existing in bangalore over the last so many years so we thought we will study them intensively and uh, just to show you that every one of us know that butterflies are distributed in six families now and most important families are papilionidae swallow tails so many beautiful butterflies are there in this family you i am showing some of the pictures which uh, attracts everybody then coming to peridae whites and yellows there are so many grass yellows common emigrants pioneer butterflies crimson tips coming to like canada blues they are known as blues there are many butterflies which are uh, looking alike also then um, some of them very difficult to identify as well coming to the another group is nymphalidae they are commonly known as brush footed butterfly examples are uh, some photographs i am showing for you common leopard common four wing tawny coaster lemon pansy palm fly etc hesperidae they are the skippers there are many uh, species in that just watch uh, see some of them here so then coming to the ecosystem services performed by butterflies very importantly as everybody mentioned before also i just want to stress upon they are important pollinators and they help in the reproductive success of many plants they serve as food for many organisms like birds lizards etc so these are the ecosystem functions overall all these the butterflies are aesthetically very important and everyone likes as i already mentioned nowadays people are growing butterfly gardens and these butterflies add beauty to the garden so ecotourism people departments and um, many areas where the tourists are going these butterfly gardens are taking prominence and they are getting more and more butterfly gardens are being established now coming to the main topic that is uh, climate change how the climate change affects the generalistically flora and fauna all of us know temperature wind velocity rainfall intensity and distribution of rain evaporation all these factors determine the vegetation in a particular area then if the climate changes in that particular area what happens it adversely impacts the diversity of the plants in that area and naturally the insect living on them especially butterflies they are extremely sensitive to the changes in the environment because they feed on the plant parts to complete their life cycle 
and also they ch and the changes in their availability and phenology impacts their diversity and abundance naturally so the climate change impacting the plant diversity plant growth that will naturally affect the distribution diversity and occurrence of the butterflies so hence this diversity of butterflies in a locality serve as the best bio indicators of health of environment and the impact of the climate change so this is a best bio indicator to know about the uh, the, the impact of uh, climate change in a particular area so with this background i am just here going to tell you about my study first so that how we got interested and uh, what are the things we are doing here so to know the seasonal variance in the abundance of butterflies we thought we should study in the different ecoclimatic zones of karnataka how the butterflies are distributed then we also know the climatic parameters in the study areas so correlating the diversity with the climatic parameters in the study areas we can get some conclusive information then based on this we want to develop a baseline data for future climate change studies with the butterflies as indicators why i am telling is by the review of literature such of our uh, review showed that there are no systematic recordings of butterflies from different parts of for example in uh, our study area karnataka state we, there are records from here and there but one area suppose somebody has uh, recorded butterflies in one area that study is not continued as a monitoring program so maybe 30 year back or 50 years back some butterflies are there in a particular area some small reports are there but after that now when i record i cannot really compare what has happened to the butterfly fauna in that particular area across a time scale of 30 to 50 years because there are no reports so how can i know or infer that the climatic changes has affected the, the population of the butterflies and the various species of currents in those particular area so we thought we have no other go we start with a baseline study in selected areas selected areas study them and make a baseline information once we do the baseline information every year or every two years or every five year as per our uh, convenience we can against we revisit the area study record the uh, diversity so likewise if we start doing we can over a across a period of five to ten years we can know the really the variation in the same area with the same flora, flora how the butterflies are getting changed how the diversity is getting changed whether any more species are being added on or whether species are getting uh, they are declined so this type of information we can in, uh, get only when i have a baseline data so then if i have a baseline data and if we continuously do it across a time period we can have a monitoring program and it will really help us to know how the environmental changes or climatic changes affect the butterflies so that was the main objective of our area and the initiating a butterfly monitoring program for karnataka by facilitating butterfly identification in the field and creating distinct database across seasons and years in the online portal this was objective of our study then as everybody knows how we started to do this is in the year 2015-16 we started selected different areas in bangalore city as well as in other different ecoclimatic areas we'll come to that little further then start the study so for this we have in the selected transect 500 meter transects were laid and tracks were recorded using gps then the data on butterflies was collected 2.5 meter on either side of either side along the transect and 5 meter above the eye level line. this is a standard procedure and the data was collected fortnightly between 8 am to 2 pm then we collected data climate data for the past many years was collected from the karnataka state natural disaster monitoring center just to know what is the current climatic condition in the study area then to tell little more brief, uh, elaborately on this our study area because my the states karnataka state is divided into three meteorological regions coastal karnataka north india karnataka and south india karnataka so we selected representative areas from these different um, climatic meteorological regions for example we selected mangalore then darwa gulbarga bangalore and shimoga for our study so here i am showing the five ecoclimatic zones of karnataka with the very distinct temperatures so i already i explained you why we selected the ecoclimatic zone because 
I am not able to get the data for the variations of butterfly occurrence due to the changes in the climate over across a period of for 30 to 50 years. Then how can I understand the importance or effect of climate on the occurrence and distribution of butterflies? So I, we thought this is the only way now currently, along with creating a baseline data, if I compare the different ecoclimatic zones with the different sets of climatic parameters and they collect the information and record it, I will come to know at least okay, this, this particular ecoclimatic area, this is the occurrence of butterfly now. At the same time, now in this particular year, this is the in another area where, where the climatic conditions are totally different. This is the uh, butterfly occurrence. So this will give me at least a little bit idea about how the temperature and climatic variations affect the butterfly distribution. Of course, there are many, many, many characteristics or factors which affect the diversity, flora, and other environmental, other aspects of environment, etc. But at least the temperature being the most important and the most um, uh, varying factors for the uh, butterfly uh, life cycle and also for its distribution. So this particular type of study gave us some conclusive information. So these are the details of the our different areas. Bangalore in the urban and rural uh, areas fall between Western and Eastern Ghats. Then in Shimoga district, Agumbe, that is actually the Chirapunji of South India, receives the highest rain for 7,000 millimeter per annum. Then the Arwa district it falls in the downward side of Western Ghat towards its east. Then another Kalburgi district, Gulbarga, which is under the Dakan Plateau region of South India, is one of the hottest districts in Karnataka. So, hottest district I got. Then Mangalore, it's a coastal area and uh, which is uh, at the sea level uh, with 100% uh, humidity throughout the year. So, this type of ecoclimatic region, regions we selected to make our studies. Then here I am just showing to you district is annual temperature for the years 2010 to 15. So the, uh, the graph is not very much, um, you cannot identify fully, but of course it gives you an idea how much fluctuating is the, the annual temperature for the different districts of Karnataka across a time scale of 2010 to 15. Similarly, this temperature variability in different districts of Karnataka from the data source of KSNMDC, you can see from time temperature in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, you can see the distribution of temperature through the color depictions. So this, this shows the there is a lot of fluctuation or variability between year to year because we, uh, we are not able to study the 30 year back data, at least for the last four or five years data, we could get an, get an idea of how the temperature varies in the different parts of the same state. Then annual rainfall is another factor. Annual rainfall here very clearly you can see in the uh, different districts of Karnataka, you can see, for example, in Dekshina Kannada, you can see the across all the years it has got a highest rainfall. Then Kodagu also has the highest rainfall. Then in my study area, Shimoga also it is there. Then um, in, uh, of course, Udupi and Uttarakhanda, we didn't select, all the DVM selected. Then Bangalore, Bangalore and Darwar area, there is uh, lesser rainfall. So this gives a very clear picture of the distinctive feature of the different districts in Karnataka uh, with reference to the rainfall pattern. So with this background, why, what we are doing is, so different areas has different distinct set of climatic conditions. So with this, we started the study to know. Then in Bangalore, we started the study and we could, we can't uh, cover all the areas of Bangalore. So what we have done is six green spaces of Bangalore city, like Lalbagh, Kaban Park, Vanilgata National Park, VKVK campus, ISA campus, and Dorsani Palya Forest campus. These six very green spaces of Bangalore city was taken for our study. Then we went to the study areas. Then we have decided what are the transects we should study through GIS mapping and in the, in all the areas. Then similarly in other areas in Shimoga and Mangalore also we have, we went to in our surveys, we have identified the transects through which we will do the study continuously. Similarly in the Arwar and Gulfarga. Then what are the study parameters? So after we collect these, uh, we, I already mentioned that monthly two surveys were conducted. 
and the seasons were defined like this october to january we consider as winter months and february to may as summer months and rainy season june to september then we also after the study we calculated the diversity indices we made the details the analysis of all that then we categorize the butterflies based on their numbers because each time when we go we are not collecting them we are just recording them we are identifying them and recording them so each time in each transect we record the number also of the different butterflies and we categorize the butterflies as very common so we uh, took a uh, index like more than 100 or equal to 100 100 it is very common then common 30 to 99 rare 6 to 29 numbers very rare below 5 so this is based on our field observation this type of categorization we did then overall i am not going to give a very detailed presentation of all the aspects here what just i am showing you from our study we found that in different uh, the selected eco climatic regions of karnataka bangalore mangalore agumbe darwar and gulbarga the number of butterflies varied so this doesn't mean that these are the total number of butterflies in that area these are only in the selected transects by continuous survey for for a period of one year covering the three seasons this is the number of butterflies for that particular year then in the case of bangalore also we studied different green spaces and we could get the in lal bag around 75 species southern bag 74 species in dorsani palya yes, we have got the highest number 89 species and in gk vk we got 83 ias 81 banerga type so these are the numbers based on our one particular year study so there are many more actually this doesn't uh, say that this is the last number then we compared because we we have nothing to compare with the earlier data only uh, we had only records from the eights 1925 to 27 his study that was published in 1933 then one study by kartik in 1999 then our study in 2015 16 i we could plot it and we found papillon day period and nymphalid and lycan day in that particular year this lycan day was the highest and uh, so the rhyodin day was as usual there were very few numbers of la da rhyodin then season wise distribution of butterflies if you see for the different eco climatic regions winter summer and rainy season the the i have presented the data to you here so you can have a look so i am finding in rainy season in mangalore we got the highest number of butterflies of course i am repeating here this is the uh, the, the uh, this table is based on our information for for study for just one year covering one month season so now currently we are repeating this study as a second phase of study because after the some four years we are now again now we are uh, repeating it so we will get a picture of how the variations has happened because we are following the same transect and in the same area so after that just to show you how we categorized them based on their numbers very common common rare and very rare and this is an example just i am showing i am not showing everything here in the bangalore would you based on our study we found that common emigrant that was very common you can read the list they are very common ones then the highest number was common emigrant in that particular year then very common common rare and many rare so some of the butterflies just to show you we are just put the some of the butterflies here common emigrant then lime butterflies plenty crimson rose then these are some of the butterflies we could uh, document from darwar gulbarga mangalore agumbe agumbe is in shimoga okay so i have very briefly only covered the our uh, information here then based on our uh, this particular study started in 2015 17 uh, 15 to 16 and continued for one more year in different eco climatic regions now we which we are repeating what are our recommendations so we understood that long term data collection is required to correlate with the climatic changes then also one more important thing is the host plant dynamics vis a vis anthropogenic activity and also the differences in the microclimatic conditions also one should document it if you really want to know how the 
climatic changes, so the environmental changes also have to be um, butterfly diversity. Then we wanted to have an online portal to share butterfly data to compare the diversity across seasons and years. So with this recommendation and uh, butterfly serving as a flagship for them, uh, the, but, uh, we, we, I'll just tell you about uh, why I took all them as flagship organisms. Uh, they, they, because as I already explained to you, they indicate the climate change and the environmental health and monitoring their diversity and distribution in an area is very important in this particular context. Though this type of monitoring programs are available in European countries and especially in UK, Mr. Um, uh, Sohail was also explaining to you in a very detailed way how they do in UK and the, what are the proposals to do in our, in our country. So actually there are no such unified effort in any state in India as of now to utilize the citizen science into processed information to monitor the butterfly populations. So this is the information we could understand. So what to do now? So we thought we will have a butterfly monitoring program. So as a pioneering effort, we in our institute in Vendor Management and Policy Research Institute Bangalore, we have a strategic knowledge center for climate change. So in this, we have initiated this program that we should do a butterfly monitoring program for the state of Karnataka. So how to monitor? Monitoring involves, as already Sohail has explained you, it's a citizen science. Otherwise, information from different areas cannot be collected by a researcher. So monitoring, but monitoring involves identification. Most important is identification, reporting them from different areas. Same areas over a time scale every month month after month and year after year but for this actually speaking we should have concepted efforts from knowledgeable researchers who can identify in the different uh, districts and the information has to be collected and it should be maintained it should be processed by one agency to have a centralized database so this can be facilitated only through people who can identify but how can general public or a student or a naturalist can identify butterfly. So we thought we should develop butterfly field guides and handbooks and also butterfly identification apps. So in this context, I want to tell you, we have developed, uh, in, uh, we have printed already one book on butterfly, uh, Bangalore butterflies, a field guide, which is having, I'll explain a little bit further again. Then one more book we are just releasing now, Karnataka butterflies. So these are the two books we have prepared and uh, the, we have also developed a butterfly identification app. So about the app, I would like to say a few things here. Engaging, as I already informed, engaging people to get information butterfly in all districts is very quite difficult. How can we say a public or a citizen to please identify? Identification may be totally wrong. So how to help them to identify? So we thought we have, based on our field identification guides, we developed a mobile app, butterfly identification app. It is developed by us for the double purpose of helping in field identification and sending the information to them. So this BIA helps in easy identification by anyone from anywhere in Karnataka as of now. And it is linked to the Karnataka uh, State Climate Change Strategic Knowledge Portal and it, it will be also soon available in the Google Play Store. This app can be downloaded by anybody. It can be downloaded free in any Android mobile. So yeah, then, so this, so the, we have considered it as a butterfly monitoring program for Karnataka. It was launched by our Honorable Minister uh, Shri Shankar in uh, on uh, 24th of uh, July 2018. Since then, we are trying to um, develop it in a bigger way. And um, and uh, the, uh, the through this app, anybody can identify the butterfly in the field itself. And the data submitted through the app will be collected and processed in the dashboard of our climate change strategic knowledge portal. I'll now a little bit explain you more about the what are the steps involved in the usage of this app. So as I, as I already mentioned to you, when we see a butterfly, we are attracted by its color. But there are so many diverse colors. And the identity can be mistaken. Many of them look alike. The patterns are so complicated, but uh, so many colors are in the same butterfly. So it's really difficult to identify them 
as first said. They are also very swift flyers. So we cannot see them properly also sometimes. So we thought we should have a some clue so that people can just identify the butterfly just by, by visual, uh, by, by seeing it in the field itself. So the identification tool, an app is developed, which can be used by any common man. And this continuous monitoring in specific areas, it can be enabled through public involvement, school children. We, have, we are roping in school children, naturalists use, and also forest department officials to use the butterfly app. So I would like to introduce our app to you, butterfly identification app. We shortly uh, call it as BIA. So it's a mobile app. And it can be downloaded in any Android phone I just told you. And uh, when you open it, you will have a help menu. So uh, browsing through the help menu, it will show you how to open it. But I'll just briefly tell you. So immediately after you open, it helps you to take photographs of the butterfly, if possible in both open and closed wing photographs. Because when it flies, it will be just flying and you may not be able to take the photo. But when it sits, it closes its wings because butterfly characteristic is when it sits, it will have the butterfly the wings closed. So closed wing condition photo. Then sometimes when it lands and sits on the leaf, uh, plant, it may be having a, um, it may be horizontal also. So we can try to take both open wing photograph and also closed wing photograph. Once after we take the phot uh, photographs, also you observe surely we will be uh, you will be seeing at least one major color in the butterfly for example somebody may say a black butterfly one orange butterfly yellow butterfly so with this visual clue what we do in this mobile app based on the color which uh, struck your eyes in major color you go to some we have given some color buttons in there six six only we have made and uh, black blue yellow orange etc then this color when you press on this color it will take you to a uh, take you to the list of or uh, there, you can scroll down menu is there when you scroll you will see the different butterflies with black black as the major color when black major color when you see the you can just compare you will be already taking a butterfly photograph early your photo will be on the top of your panel and the screen the, the scrolling photographs will be down just as is shown here and you Go on scrolling and match with your butterfly. Also, you have seen it also in the field. If it is still uh, sitting in stand or still available in the field, you can observe that also. And you can have the field guides also in your hand. But the app, mobile app, will surely help you to scroll and just locate the butterfly and match the butterfly with its characters. So once you match the butterfly, you are sure, oh, this is the butterfly which I have seen just now. You be, along with your photographs is also in front of you, both the closed wing pattern and also the open wing. So you compare it, then you submit button. We'll send this information straight away to the dashboard of our Karnataka State Climate Change Strategic Knowledge Portal. And this information across regions, seasons, years, along with the climate data. We have the climate data readily available from the uh, Natural Disaster Monitoring Center. And we have also established weather centers in some other selected places. So the climatic data is available with us. This information from the specific areas are with us. So if this program goes on, this program is initiated, but the little initial problems are there. Once we sort it out, the if it goes well, it will really give us a very good database of butterflies from all the districts of Kalimantan, and it will be forming a database in our knowledge portal. And this portal, it will be. Even we, uh, we are planning it to, it will be visible to all the public, researchers, researchers. Now, how to download the butterfly identification in your mobile? Though now we have envisaged to use it for our Karnataka state. There is nothing wrong that we can uh, use it for the whole India also. Maybe I don't know what all modifications we have to do. Currently, we, our planning goes for but, uh, Karnataka. So, the I just we have given here steps here. I already have explained to you. In your mobile app, you have to go to the mp3.karnataka.gov in. Then uh, in the navigation bar, you will see the BIA. And uh, you will see the uh, click uh, link also. I have given you here. Then it will be downloaded to your mobile. And after the download is completed, you have to install it. 
and once you open it you can go, go with it if you have an internet in that you can go to your field and you can start identifying along with the butterfly guides also we are providing to everybody so just to show you our uh, publications one on bangalore butterflies which we have released uh, which we have prepared in 2018 now currently we have released just now we are uh, this month we are already printing karnataka butterfly say field guide and in the um, uh, earlier book which i told you color uh, field guide actually we have covered only butterflies of bangalore around 153 species are covered in that and in the current book we are actually covering around 330 30 species of butterflies which are already known and recorded from karnataka and um, so what is our plan is ngc schools national green crop crop schools they are attached with us and also forest departments so schools are located in the urban and uh, semi urban and rural areas of the different districts of karnataka so those school children if they can spend their one or two hours per month along with a biology teacher or any teacher for that matter with an android mobile go to their premises in the school area or go to a the nearby uh, plants where, where garden or even bushes even weeds just nearby areas of their school the same gps location if they collect the identify the butterflies using our app and also with the help of the butterfly field guide this information will come to our data dashboard this if it goes very well from all over the karnataka state from all the districts of karnataka state will be getting the very large information on butterfly occurrence month after month and year after year we will form a really very great uh, um, database for us to compare across years um, in comparison to the climatic changes in that area also so this is what is our butterfly monitoring program which we have initiated and just started and already the we could get uh, success in the collection of uh, the information from different schools but it is now just taking a uh, there are initial hitches are there so it just getting on and we we, we are soon um, hopeful that this should be taken up by all the schools or all the districts of karnataka to make it as a really valuable program then to just tell you the field guide there is a specialty for the field guide which we have prepared here the field guides are actually as i already mentioned how to identify the butterfly when they are sitting or flying it's a very difficult task so as i already mentioned in the butterfly app as well as in the identification guide what we have done is we have made a color coding so the field guide is having margins with different colors mainly six colors so it will guide you to the page color code of the pages if you turn the pages of the book you will see the different margins with the different colors black brown or orange etc so you turn the pages so you are in the field you are seeing a butterfly you felt it's a black butterfly go to the page showing the margin with black just turn the pages and you can just look at which the butterfly you have seen it will help you to identify you go as a team then uh, five six children along with the teacher or even anybody alone also can go and uh, use the butterfly guide to identify and use the mobile app with internet facility use it and uh, the same principle of the color coding i have made this as a color coded uh, in the app also the principle is just different colors actually we may say there are so many colors hundreds of colors in that way. but we can't uh, depict everything here so only just six colors so the variations of the different colors are also put in the same uh, color coded pages of the uh, field guide as well as in the app the color buttons black black button indicates not you will not get a full black butterfly one major color of the wing should be black so then you you will be able to locate the butterfly in the pages with the color code of black so basically as i already mentioned six color codes we have used black orange yellow white brown and blue and the color you go to the color coded page search to see the photo and you will see the photo of both open wing and the closed wing and also whenever there is difference of male and female we have depicted that also so male and female usually sometimes they they are same looking alike in many of the species but many of the species they are quite different they are entirely different where they where they there will be difference in colors 
so male female also we have given both we have depicted in the book open wings and also closed wings so usually the butterfly is sitting poster is with closed wings so when you when it closes the wing you are seeing the ventral side of the wing so then open wing you are seeing the dorsal side of the wing so both type of photos we are trying to incorporate in the book then main female difference also wherever the male female differences are there we have recorded uh, we have put that photo also there so this is about uh, the field guide uh, then uh, okay so using this as a program for Karnataka, we have initiated to publicize and give these books to everybody in the different schools or even different colleges who are comes forward only with a condition or uh, with a recommendation that they should use this every month. Every month, one should go to the field, same area, see your butterflies, identify them, submit button, you submit information, it will come to us, to our data board. So, likewise, if in all the districts, if it goes on nicely, it will create a wonderful database for the state of Karnataka. So this model can be replicated in any of all the states also. And um, and we are currently we are in thinking of utilizing the services of school children because they will be uh, very much attracted by the butterflies. And uh, in a biology school, uh, uh, the biology hour we can use one or two hour for this type of field interaction and going to the field and seeing the flowers and the butterflies and also they can make it a school program they can record it make as their own school program they can document it at the same time it will be a very important noble uh, venture to help in the butterfly monitoring program which we are into now so this data collection should be continued long term to build the a region specific database for butterflies so then uh, once it is developed it will be visible to the public in the uh, anybody can see in our web portal by logging in and the uh, data will be we are planning to make it as a DS based uh, depiction uh, with the different districts will be displayed and on the click of that you will be able to see the butterflies prevalent in that particular month or year etc so that plan is just about to be executed now so this is the overall plan what we have thought in uh, Karnataka to start with and uh, of course this will be this venture will be successful with the support by support of citizens as uh, Sohail put it so in this case the uh, we, are, we are facilitating the submission of the information then and there in the field through this app so this is about our uh, plan then uh, given here our contact numbers and uh, entry.climatechange.gmail.com is our uh, mail id and we anybody can contact us to know further about this program so thank you one and all for uh, patient hearing hope i could uh, make myself clear to all of you thank you once again Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It's a really wonderful uh, that presentation. Our students, I hope, have a very uh, that uh, nice uh, idea about how to uh, that uh, inculcate uh, the knowledge in uh, culture and collection, even if in identification of this butterfly. And uh, through your talk, uh, that you have mentioned that really. It is a flying jewel that we have to admit. And also beauty to nature. Really, you have explained in a very narrative way that uh, the beauty of nature as well as flying jewels. And through your talk, you have also mentioned how that uh, butterfly serves as a flagship organism to nature. This is really wonderful. And... Uh, through your discussion also, you have very vividly described the importance of eco-climatic areas, mostly based on the Karnataka state. And uh, uh, ma'am, I was really impressed by your explanation uh, on very, in a very simple way, the basics about uh, the protocol, as well as identification, and even the collection of data 
which is bit difficult for the newcomers or for our student viewers this is really splendid and you have also very nicely explained the emphasized and also emphasized on the role of temperature as well as that rainfall both the climatic condition extremely extremely impact the population of butterflies then uh, ma'am mostly the monarch species they have a very uh, that means according to literature 95% of population they have that uh, lose their uh, identity then uh, this is mostly due to two factors in uh, environmental uh, the two factors that is one is rainfall as well as uh, temperature and you have really very clearly mentioned about this thank you ma'am nice to have this uh, that uh, presentation i hope our students and our uh, other viewers they have a very that uh, uh, useful knowledge about this new topic and as you have discussed the flying jewels thank you ma'am nice to then there are some questions yes from my side i have one question ma'am uh, when in case of monarch uh, that uh, both uh, migration as well as hibernation both has a role then how come we can correlate these two through your uh, that uh, data collection as well as your interpretation that's why actually i mentioned you the climate has a very major role in the development of you know that so they they and also one more factor is the plant they are the butterflies are all herbivores so they are they have to eat the plant and the plant should have suppose the, the butterfly eats for example the leaf fleshy leaf then the, there should be fleshy leaf in the tree now similarly suppose it's a flower eater there should be flower so the phenology and the growth of plant everything is dependent on the climatic condition so due to the climatic variations if the plants are not growing properly or the the plant part which is eaten by that particular butterfly is not available it will not be available similarly we have also found even wet season and dry season makes changes in the butterflies uh, even color and uh, markings there are many butterflies which have dry season form and wet season form so you will you may think this is another butterfly so species identity is also very uh, difficult to be made because of the variations in the color and the size size color everything is changed due to the uh, climatic variabilities and changes so th this is common for many butterfly of course some butterflies don't have different forms but i have seen many butterflies have different forms in different seasons thank you ma'am uh, one more question uh, from the uh, that uh, uh, viewers whether this climatic change can induce any change in wing color pattern oh yes in specific now, species yes just now i think i explained that also now there is yes. change the, uh, there is change in the wing color that's what i said wing color and patterns you know there is quite yes. a drastic change based on the season in dry season one particular color in another season yes. color is totally different so even identity is also very different difficult in such cases so they say very yeah, clear ex hmm. extreme dry condition uh, has some role in that pattern of coloration and yes. yes that's what not for all butterflies there are some of the these, some yeah, uh, some cases we have found or there are records yeah. you can just see in the, the different portals even so hail was explaining you you can just go and see some butterflies dry season form wet season form they are quite different uh, another question from uh, bishnu bishnu prasad do the uh, butterfly species uh, from uh, stable population in urban ecosystem age comparable to white population comparable to uh comparable to wild population wild population that That's means in forest areas forest ecosystem 
that's why i just told you because of the plant on which they live because as yeah. any other organism no if the plant growth is yeah. better if the nutritional conditions or the for example if it is eating on the flower or it's a leaf whatever it is if it's a very good healthy healthy nutritious material naturally the even the size color color variations also little bit happen patterns also little bit. size is of that course no, size is totally um, guided by the uh, nutritional content of the host plant so there are sure the uh, variations between uh, different area wise also and uh, of course the patterns will be same usually but in some cases we have seen totally different colors different patterns uh, thank you ma'am another question from somaranjan uh, his question is are there any species of butterflies which are on the verge of extinction yes so many butterflies are highly are endangered yes so many are there even wildlife protection act 1972 no it has enlisted butterflies scheduled butterflies are there so that is a long back they have to categorize you now this being revised many butterflies even endangered now actually there should be a relook into the endangered butterflies so the reason and perhaps may one is climate change any uh, that uh, concrete data on any uh, that uh, particular species actually as i mentioned to you Uh, of yeah. course even dr kailash chandra's presentation he was telling about the variation and migration of butterflies from the lower higher the you know, high, to high, to higher altitudes because of the climatic changes the butterflies are migrating so migration behavior is also affected by the climatic changes so there are examples of course we have not studied into a large extent in the vast areas this type of migratory behavior or the variations in the patterns we are not concentrated on such that, that type of studies our main idea is with respect with reference to the climatic conditions how the variations in the diversity distribution and how the butterfly they really depict or bio indicate the climatic conditions in india that is our main thank you objective. thank you ma'am thank you one of our former uh, professor from revenza university and uh, dr dhirendra kumar sadangi uh, he just uh, 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 just uh, informed you uh, uh, he uh, just gratitude towards you and uh, the department of zoology for organizing such an event thank you ma'am nice to meet now i, I can uh, share with uh, dipti madam the covid inator just to progress for the meeting Thank you. Dipti ma'am. Uh, thank you, uh, Manorama ma'am. May I now request uh, Professor Luna Saman to kindly uh, invite our Vice Chancellor for giving his concluding remarks. Thank you, Dr. Dipti. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to. Uh, thank uh, madam rema devi for this illuminating talk on uh, as by butterflies as a climate change species uh, uh, now at the end of towards the end of the session since professor uh, isan kumar patra our honorable vice chancellor is chairing the session uh, and all the audiences are also eager to listen to him for his concluding remark on this session sir please uh, namaskar uh, dr kailas and dr uh, rema devi uh it was a wonderful uh, session full of information uh i would uh, not uh, really give a long uh, note on this because yesterday i i told a lot of things on this uh what i would like to tell is that uh, most students when they are reading in their bsc lose interest in taxonomy because they think that taxonomy is a classical subject and uh, today if most of my students have been listening to two of you they will now understand that taxonomy is not only identifying a species and naming it it also goes to conservation biodiversity on which people are talking a lot today dna barcoding dna fingerprinting and molecular phylogeny 
see all these technologies are the latest and modern technologies available on we have been studying like we have been studying the insects for uh, almost uh, thousands of years may say like dr kailash chandra said it's uh, from the 4700 bc as the last record that we have from there we have been studying this and from 1916 our jdsi has been doing a lot of work on uh, animal conservation and animal taxonomy and animal studies what i think now is that i'll request jdsi to develop a uh, develop two papers one for the undergraduate students and one for the postgraduate students on taxonomy with the contemporary concepts so that they understand that this is no longer only identifying a species this has gone beyond much beyond that and possibly this dna fingerprinting and uh, molecular phylogeny has got a lot to tell about the evolution of human race from where we have come where we are going everything will be taken care of by that and i am also happy to note that it was very clearly told in both the lectures that parasite uh, these uh, butterflies are not pests they do not damage your crop they of course eat upon little of little bit of uh, flower and and the leaves but they are definitely not pests and they help pollination and help uh, production from the agriculture stuff that we have and uh, this is a potential indicator of climatic change and environmental damage that we call that we cause to the to our own environment so there was one question somebody asked that how to make a geological survey uh, exciting for common man uh, the only thing is that you have to attend the uh, public events of jdsi or visit jdsi once you will understand what it is i have been to there that that place and jdsi does wonderful work on animal kingdom so the books that they have published the encyclopedia they have they have published the coffee table books that they have published are all excellent the pictures they have taken is fantastic so everything in these two days have been very very exciting and uh, i i happen to remember uh, our research days with dr kailash chandra and there was a teacher also who is no more now professor j s yadav and his own research guide uh, who is still continuing with a lot of work now uh, professor ic mittal uh, i'll tell you two things one is uh, dr kailash chandra was our colleague and we were doing research i was working in the lab and he used to work in the field and for days together we do not see his face because he is after the beetles looking for them see how much of uh, how much of uh, energy is put into uh, making something like dr kailash chandra why i named dr j s yadav today is I, i he was also another person was working on beetles in which kailash chandra was also working with two different kind of beetles kailash chandra was doing the taxonomy part of ecology part of it and what uh, uh, what uh, Dr. Jada was doing as a uh, cytogenetics of beetles, the genetic evolution of beetles, or evolutionary genetics of beetles. And what uh, used to happen with this gentleman is he picks up a beetle in the morning. He'll come back for dinner. He used to have dinner with us in our uh, research scholars hostel. He'll come back to the dinner only after the cardiograph is ready. See, that is what is research, and that is what people do to become something in life. So, I by these two examples, what I wanted to tell my students is that sincere, serious, dedicated uh, work that only will put you to this kind of uh, webinar or seminars where you will be leading lecture. You will be a lead lecture lecturer, and then you will be speaking to the audience about something. so these man these people even madam had done wonderful research that was that was how he was, he was introduced so all these kind of good things will bring you to a good uh, recognition in future so my dear students what i want to tell you this the fed effort was made 
to introduce you to citizen science, to introduce you to butterfly month, to introduce you to do small science which could become a big science tomorrow. And see, imagine if you identify one new species in the campus or one new species in place where you live, tomorrow the same species study will go up to molecular phylogeny. So this is what science is. So every small contribution, every small question answered makes science big or big science appears out of it. So I wish you all very good luck. Thank you very much, Dr. Kailash Chandra and Madam Rima David for uh, spending your valuable time with our students, encouraging them to get into uh, science, getting into small research or small project work, which would envisage a, a future scientist in them. So thank you very much to the uh, my colleagues in geology department um, for uh, making this happen, for their efforts in making it. Uh, and to my student, Dr. Kupes, who really um, uh, initiated this uh, idea of holding this activity in, in Ravensa also. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, have good luck and uh, see you sometime. Thank you. Bye-bye. So now you have to uh, you know, concluding remarks and uh, i'm so happy that you stressed on the importance of a subject like taxonomy i'm sure our students would have listened to you very carefully may i now request dr lipika patnai to formally propose the vote of thanks to you ma'am thank you dipti ma'am good evening to all as all good things uh, come to an end in life so is this webinar on behalf of Department of Zoology, I take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar series on Big Butterfly Month. At the outset, I thank our speakers, Dr. Kailash Chandra and Dr. O.K. Ramadevi, Madam. We are really enlightened and blessed with your presence and knowledge in our virtual webinar series conducted by Department of Zoology under Ravensha University. We are thankful to our dear Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor Ishan Kumar Patro, for his constant motivation, enthusiasm, and his faith in us and our team. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank the convener, Professor Luna Saman, for her uh, continuous support and cooperation. A special thanks to the coordinator, Dr. Dipti Raut, for making this happen through her meticulous planning and execution. My sincere thanks to both the moderators of today's session, Dr. Dhananjay Soren and Dr. Manorma Patri and other faculty members of the department for their contribution. We appreciate the hard uh, work of and efforts of Mr. Vishnu Parida and Mr. Vishal in preparing the videos as they have given a very meaningful touch to the entire webinar series. Thank you, I mean, Vishnu and Vishal. Without both of you, this program definitely would have been uh, like a success as such. I'll be failing in my duty if I do not extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Nilipta Swain for her technical help and patiently dealing with all our small, small technical uh, queries. Thank you, Nilipta, for making all of us familiar with the system and solving our queries all the time. Our sincere thanks again to all the students and faculty members from different educational institutes across the state and country. I do extend my gratitude to Dr. Bhupesh and uh, Bombay Natural History Society for giving us the platform and opportunity to be part of this big butterfly group. Thank you. Once again, I thank all for your cordial cooperation. I'll just conclude by saying our lives are similar to butterflies. Without being a caterpillar, we can't appreciate being a butterfly. Thank you. Over to you, Nilip. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of this broadcast. Thank you all for your for your active participation. Thank you. Thank you, Director Alas. Thank you, Ramadev, madam. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.